Hello everyone, welcome back to Triclaw Gaming with me, Fletcher, and today we're just going to do a bit of an unscripted chat um, about the latest article that dropped on Game Informer for uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2. As per normal, if you are new here, please don't uh, forget to subscribe or at least ring the bell so you're kept up to date with all the newest videos we release. And if you are already subscribed, don't forget to like and comment. So, I just wanted to do a quick chat um, in my own style about some of the information we've had in this article. And I want to draw people's attention first of all to this, um, to the image of the T-Rex that we have here. Um, ignoring the buildings along the side, I just want to draw people's attention to two things. Firstly, the Rex skin. Um, it's pretty bland. Um, if this is the best Rex skin they have, it's not good news for the Rex looking more interesting than JWB1. But more, um, more problematic for me is the path at the bottom. You can see that it's not entirely 100% smooth or flat, so it looks like the path is just going to paint the ground as we had in JWB1, um, which doesn't give much hope for things like being able to build paths up higher or lower than the terrain. Um, bear with me, just having tea. Um, so yeah, that's disappointing to see. But let's go away from the picture and look uh, down at the chat. Most of this is fluffy. Um, so the guy had a 30 minute hands-off demonstration and uh, new aviary. Most of this is just fluff. Right, so he was apparently playing on a sandbox map. Uh, and we've had, we have confirmation here from this Richard Newbold that um, all the maps the player has access to are a lot bigger than the first game and there's a lot more space um, possible. That's good. Um, one of the issues with JWE1 was sort of the compression of the maps that you had for uh, the islands, which, um, which was uh, never very uh, good, to be honest. Um, and then having a look down here, we've got uh, ch there, there's confirmation of change the territory system. Dinosaurs are going to need a lot more space in some instances. There's going to be direct conflicts between some species. That'll be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what direct conflict is going to look like. Um, I hope it's a little better than some of the animations we got on JWB1. Um, this, this idea that we're going to have to balance which dinosaurs live together kind of kind of reminds me of um, the paleobotany system but kind of expanded upon so I mean the, the paleobotany system in JWE1 was kind of a way of restricting what dinosaurs could live together so it sounds like a bit of an evolution on that um, we've got confirmation of a desert setting that was all though in terms of biomes and got another picture of the Amargosaurus got it's chunky um, I hope not all the dinosaurs are going to be super chunky like this. I know some people find them adorable when they're chunky, but I don't know. A little, a little bit less obese dinosaurs would be nice, but yeah, it looks nice. The skin is good, the texture is good. Got those cactuses in the background again. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking dinosaur. Um, so this is nothing really new here apart from this so apparently they hatched two Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Hammond Creation Lab and they hatched and they release at the same time um, and they've got a unique animation as a result um, that's kind of nice it'll be good to be able to hatch more than one and have them exit at the same time um, it's the most annoying feature of JWB1. Um, so this is the first big news, this, this paragraph here. Um, so apparently every single dinosaur is going to have about a dozen body colours with seven different patterns. Um, that's quite an incredible amount of customization for 
uh, for the dinosaurs, and I'm a, I'm honestly a little surprised at that, because if you think about it, that's what twelve times eight. Um, twelve times eight for just one dinosaur, and they're doing it for seventy-five, more than seventy-five. Um, that's that seems like a lot of work. So. <clears throat> It sounds good, but I'm a little cautious about this, um, the, how, just how much creativity there's going to be with body colours and the patterning. Um, I have a feeling some are still going to be extraordinarily bland, um, because I, I don't see them being able to do, or 84 times 75. Um, and make them all look good. But having more customization is always good, so I can't fault them on that. Um, apparently, holding true to the expeditions from the first game, Dino DNA is again obtained from fossils. Now, this bit sounds a bit weird. I don't understand why. Um, I, ho I thought the whole point of Dominion and clearly what this game is going for is that dinosaurs have taken over the world um, so it seems a bit strange that we'd be sending out fossil teams to go dig them up um, so that just seems a bit strange to me um, we have confirmation that the DNA tweaking is still going to be in the game so that's I hope it's better than how it was in JWE1 um, so now we, we incubate a, a clutch of eggs and um, apparently you then choose which ones you want to have from that clutch, That's that seems like how it's described there. It's an interesting way of doing it. Um, I hope the sort of side effects genetic manipulation are a little less predictable. Um, that was one of the problems with the system in JWB1, that, that the, everything was just too predictable. Um, and apparently after it's hatched it will explore the habitat to see if there's an area in it that fits its needs and if so the dinosaur will claim its territory. Um, this is this is the beginning of this this apparently new system where the dinosaur is going to um, take its take territory in in its habitat for itself and apparently we're going to be able to see that territory inside a highlighted enclosure um, and apparently this, this system is dynamic, apparently. Um, I really hope so. I mean, they said a lot of things like that about Jurassic World Evolution 1. These dinosaurs are, are dynamic and immersive, and the, the management system is dynamic and immersive. And it wasn't. So, I hope it is dynamic, but all I would say is that what their opinion of dynamic is and what our opinion of dynamic is are two different things. But by the way it sounds, what, by what Newbold has said here, that um, apparently as the tri this, as in this case Triceratops moves, it will move, it, the territory will change shape and um, alter in relation to other dinosaurs and the environmental needs that it has. Um, we have here confirmation. Some, sometimes the species are complementary and they live together harm, harm, uh, harmoniously. But other times the species will have conflicts, especially if there's an overlap in their um, territory. Yeah, it's a dynamic system that puts a realistic connection between dinosaurs. This also means species will rest together, socialize, and act more like a herd in their defined space. All sounds really good. Um, Sounds interesting and sounds uh, kind of difficult actually. Um, I have I get a feeling that certain dinosaurs, looking at you, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Ankylosaurus, um, things like Sauropelta if you're back in the game, things like um, oh, that's what um, maybe certain types of Hadrosaur or certain other types of ceratopsian are going to be quite um, aggressive with their territory so I have a feeling that that's going to, they're going to, we're going to have some fun with her. 
Um, so apparently they've made it easier for players to implement changes to the enclosures without back and forth to menus and gameplays. Um, I can quickly edit the environment with landscaping tools and you can see the dinosaur information is left up so I can quickly reference it. So basically they're just allowing you to keep the dinosaur menu in the top corner while you're editing the enclosure which it, it's a nice quality of life improvement. Um, so this is the next big thing. Um, Herbivores now feed on foliage and no longer require feed feeders, so you'll have to make sure you've got the right plants in the um, enclosure for them to eat. That's really good. Um, it's about time. It was one of the biggest annoyances for Jurassic World Evolution 1 that um, herbivorous dinosaurs would forage from the ground but never eat from the ground. Um, and this also seems to refer again back to that paleobotany system of having different types of plants and such. Um, he mentions um, that the number of items the players can add to the enclosure has been greatly expanded. He saw roughly a dozen different rocks, so that'll make uh, Evo happy. Um, but no mention on anything else. But it sounds good. Uh, this Nesutoceratops picture, not much to say here apart from uh, we have a copy paste viewing tower which is not good, um, a bit disappointing. We have nothing new in the background. We do have what looks like a ranger jeep here. Um, the bigger issue though for me is these Nesutoceratops. They're again, the skins are bland. Um, the patterning on the frill is a little meh, in my opinion. Just doesn't look very nice. And I don't know if all the if all the dinosaurs are just gonna have two two colours per skin, as opposed to all the variation we got in JWE1 on some skins, then that new skin system may be a bit disappointing. Um, I don't know, I'll have to wait, we'll have to wait and see uh, um, if you get any proper look at the skinning system, but um, I'm not fond of those Nasuto skins, or even really the model, those horns look a bit um, bizarre, they don't, I don't know, they're they just seem a bit strange to me. They're very wide and um, they kind of remind me of a, like a crab claw, to be honest. So not fond of the Nisuto Ceratops model there. Um, so now we have conversation about the aviary. So he says the habitat is barren at first, but Woods dives into the editing tools to add trees, water, and rocks to it. The size is determined by the player. More glass domes can be added freely, like the fencing. Um, I actually suggested that the aviary would work like the paths and fencing, where you could easily expand them. Um, so I'm glad to see I was at least semi right about that. Um, if the pteranodons grow agitated, they can smash through the glass and fly around the park, potentially going after guests. Um, yeah, good. As instead of just disappearing like they do in JWE1, um, I asked if ground dinosaurs could interact with flying reptiles, and neither Woods or Newbold wanted to talk about it yet. So they are still hiding a few things. Um, I didn't see any dinosaurs fight, but I'm told the smaller variety will team up to take on the large beasts. That means raptors will hunt in packs. The predators, after taking their, after taking after prey, will chase them dynamically. There's no stopping starting. There's improvements to the fighting system as well. Let's hope so, but um, let's see it in gameplay. Um, if dinosaurs injured, it may need to visit the paleo medical facility. One new structure I see amongst the Ranger Station Research Center park tour are more buildings from the first game. So we do have some confirmation here that they're reusing a lot of buildings from the first game, but they are adding, you know, medical treatment, which again is a, a good thing to add. Gonna have some more tea. Mm. Um. So you apparently need to fly 
dinosaurs in there to them via helicopter to be treated if it can't be treated in the field. Um, it also comes with a unique vehicle which you can freely control just like any of the other vehicles in the game. So it, adding basically veterinary care, medical care, um, it's going to add another layer of management which is good because the original game didn't have barely any layers of management so that's all good. So far we're, we're being quite positive here aren't we folks? <laughs> um, uh, monitoring dinosaurs health will be easy through the implementation of a ranger post which is a small shack you can place anywhere inside an enclosure that will be good so we can actually we don't have to have ranger buildings absolutely everywhere um, sort of outside taking up room dino vitals are not as clearly defined in the sequel wood says there's a bit of a fog of war to that information and the player will need to keep tabs on it so that's good. So, you know, bringing players back to enclosures and such to keep an eye on their dinosaurs. Um, this Pteranodon, I hate it. I'm, I really am not a, f I'm not a fan of this Pteranodon. I don't understand why we have a really short, stout crest and why we don't have a proper crest that Pteranodon has. I mean, it's in the fossil. This is completely against what the fossil evidence shows. So. This remodel of the Pteranodon they've done, not a fan. Um, I'm seriously hoping that this crestless version is just a, like a variation that you can have and we have a proper Pteranodon version. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Significant improvements are being applied to guests and their behaviours and the structures you build. Each guest's mood is divided into four categories, adventure, standard, nature and luxury. They will gravitate to areas they seek the most for an instance. An adventure junkie will want to see carnivores. That's good. But it's disappointing that... Um, hang on, I don't mean disappointing. It's good, but JPOG had this ten years ago. More than ten years ago. Um, so... They have finally caught up back to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis with JWE2. It's good, but let's not remember how terrible the guests were in JWE1, shall we? Um, I'm not sure they get points for doing what they should have done to start with. But I'm just trying to find things to be negative about now, because this is all really positive. And I have to say, reading through the whole thing, I am a little bit more hyped than I was before. Um, however, getting back to it, yeah, we're going to have to tailor uh, attractions and amenities. So, customization. So, to be to, to 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 be fast, it looks like you you're going to have a base building, and then you can you can alter the roof decoration and entrance locations and signage and decorations all around the rest of the building um, for how you want it to be, and you can also alter the colors using a color wheel with specific shades from that will. This sounds really good. So it's kind of, it's it's not fully modular like Prehistoric Kingdom or Planet Zoo, but it's not excessively simple like it was in JWE1. It seems like it's going to strike the nice middle ground where modifying these buildings is easy and not sort of in the five hours to build a small building um, like Planet Zoo and Planet Prehistoric Kingdom can be. Um, so apparently we now have time controls which is good um, I hope there's a way actually thinking about these time controls I hope there's a way of determining um, how much time is actually passing um, now I hope we have a calendar or day night cycle or just something that will give us an indication of how much time is passing um, uh, so apparently one of the new threats in the region is a snowstorm which covers the ground in snow and create problems all over the park such as losing power. Sounds like that's just going to be a reskinned normal storm for me but um, I hope they do something unique with it. Um, something they did actually mention higher up in the article is that there's a focus on North American territories. That's a bit disappointing. We don't there are lots of biomes around the world and not really sure why it has to be America. Um, but maybe hopefully in DLCs they might focus on other parts of the world, would be nice. 
Um, we have a nice screenshot of Brachiosaurus. I have to say, this skin looks quite nice. Um, this dappled, mottled, grey and dark battleship grey. Um, we don't. We have a singular dome aviary here. That's gonna. That's quite a small one, but so there's confirmation that we can have vastly different sizes, which is good. Um, and we have this old. I think this is a cycad or a tree fern. Um, in the foreground, that's definitely been hand placed. These are. Uh, these other trees, this, this, they look really distinctive compared to that one in the foreground. So again, there's some unique vegetation. Um, so apparently he didn't get to see the Mosasaurus or any of the aquatic animals. Um, I find it very strange they're being quite secretive about that. I'm wondering whether it's because they haven't entirely finished the aquatic stuff yet. Um, which it is indeed possible. Or they're just a bit nervous about how we might all react to it. Who knows. Something uh, me and Leviathan have actually spoken to, Leviathan being another moderator from Evo's channel, obviously, is that um, perhaps the aquatic stuff will be limited to a set location in America. Maybe you have to go to like Florida or something where you have lots of ocean and you're only allowed to make aquatic animals there. That would seem to be a, a possibility of how you have aquatic, uh, a fully fledged aquatic sort of uh, birthing system and feeding system and everything else without it being in every single park, which may not necessarily have enough space and water for it all. Um, let's keep our eye on that. And if that is the situation, I call it. <laughs> um, other details well, we there's contract missions aren't in the story campaign but will be present in challenge mode so we're going to have no divisions in the campaign mode which is good um, nothing about PZ specifications or switch version um, so basically, it's a deeper experience with more quality of life improvements. And he apparently saw Acrocanthosaurus, Allosaurus, uh, Amargosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Baryonyx. I'm glad Baryonyx is back. I'm glad Acrocanthosaurus is back, actually. Um, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, Nasuto, Pteranodon, Stego, Trike, and the T Rex. Um, so that's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 dinosaurs or uh, and uh, pterodactyls. Um, so that dinosaur list is expanding slowly. Um, they've still got a long way to go, more dinosaurs to reveal. What's my overall impression of this? It sounds very good. Um, let me just have some more tea before we get into final conclusion. Also, I have to say, I, I like the, the sound of um, this aquarium building for the guests. I'm wondering if we're going to have, like, ammonites or sea scorpions or stuff like that in there. That could be fun. Um, but on the whole, the article is quite positive. And I have to admit, it's difficult not to be a little bit more hyped after reading through everything it's going to have in it. Um, the only thing I would warn is, while it sounds very good and it reads very good and it's all very positive, we have been here before with JWB1. You know, reviews when the game came out were all very positive and said lots of nice stuff like dynamic dinosaurs and immersive gameplay and immersive management and everything else and it wasn't true and the only article that was true was the IGN article um, so the only warning I would have about this article is to remember the game you know what's dynamic and immersive to us is different to what's dynamic and immersive to a, rev a reviewer and let's be fair, he's been invited to come and see this because they want to get some marketing out of it. So, of course it's going to be positive, There's, they're not going to say that anything critical at this juncture. So, 
All I would say is to take everything in here with a bit of a pinch of salt and to wait f and see some actual proper in-house gameplay um, and then we can start making more informed judgments but just off this article it all sounds really good and I'm a little bit more hyped and a little bit less pessimistic but let's hope we get to see a lot more information in the coming weeks and months. They're being a bit quiet at the moment, I'm assuming because this article is going to come out. So let's hope we get plenty of information from here on. Um, anyway, that's about all I have to say about this. So um, don't forget to rem remember to like, comment and subscribe folks. And I'll um, speak to you in the next video. Goodbye.